today we will discuss the mass movement of inertia so in mass movement of inertia in place of area the mass is considered so in in area movement of inertia we consider the area of the figure but here in mass movement of inertia we consider the mass of the body so first of all we are determining the mass movement of inertia for a rod so suppose this is a rod this is a rod of length capital l and total mass of the rod is capital n total mass and a small m is the mass per unit length a small m is the mass per unit length so this is small m is equal to the capital m upon capital l because the total length is l now we are determining the mass movement of inertia of this rod along this axis along this axis so for this we are considering an element of thickness x at a distance x from this axis so thickness is dx now the mass of the element is dm because this is the mass of the element so it is dm now dm is equal to the mass per unit length multiplied by the length dx for the element so mass of the element is dm so dm is equal to mass per unit length multiplied by the dx so this is the mass of the element now mass moment of inertia about this y y x will be equal to x square into dm mass moment of inertia second moment of mass about this difference axis so x is the distance of dm so multiplied by the square of the distance and this will give the mass moment of inertia of this element and if we increase integrate it for the whole rod then it will give the total mass of mass moment of inertia for the whole rod and the limits will be equal to 0 to l 0 to capital l so limits will be equal to 0 to capital l so now we will put the value of dm here so this will be equal to 0 to l and x square and value of dm is m into dx m into dx so now on integrating it m is common because it is constant so m come outside and this will remain 0 to l x square dx and this will be equal to m into x cube divided by 3 on integrating and on putting limits 0 to l this will be equal to m into l cube 
by 3. And on putting the value of small m is capital M divided by L multiplied by L cube by 3. So this will be equal to I y y will be equal to M L square by 3. So this is the mass moment of inertia of a rod about the axis at its end. About the axis at its end. So this is the axis at the end of the rod. Now if we want to calculate the mass movement of inertia about its CD. So this CD CG center of gravity. So the center of gravity will be at a distance capital L by 2 from this line because it is a rod. So for this CG will be at a distance L by 2. So these are the parallel lines. This is the axis passing through the center of gravity and this is the axis at one end. So by using parallel axis theorem we can find out the value at the axis passing through the center of gravity. So now for this by parallel axis theorem this i y y is equal to i c g plus total mass of the rod multiplied by L y 2 per whole square. So this will be I y y is we have calculated ml square by 3 and this I c d plus total mass into whole square of this is equal to L square by 4. So this ICG moment of inertia, mass moment of inertia of the rod about the axis passing through its center of gravity. So this will be equal to ML square by 3 minus ml square by 4. For this ICG is ml square by 12. So this is the value of mass moment of inertia of a rod about an axis passing through its center of gravity. About the axis passing through its center of gravity is ml square by 12 and the axis about passing through its one end is ml square by 3. Okay? Thank you. Now the mass movement of inertia of a ring. So, this is a ring. This is a ring. And this is x axis, and this is y axis for ring. So, in this ring, we consider an element if this is theta and this angle is d theta and the radius of this ring is capital R. 
and this is dx this is at a distance or radius capital r this is at a distance or radius at capital r and this is dx is the thickness so now capital m is the total mass of this ring capital m is the total mass of this ring and small m is mass per unit volume mass per unit volume so mass per unit volume is 2 pi r is the length of the ring multiplied by t is the thickness so mass per unit volume 2 pi r into t now this elemental mass elemental mass is pm and this is equal to m into dx into t m into dx into t because this is the volume of the element and multiplied by the mass per unit volume so it will give the mass of the element now on putting this value of dx is equal to r d theta this will be equal to r d theta dx is equal to r d theta because this is d theta and this is r so it will be r d theta so now on putting value of dx as r d theta so m into t into r d theta so this is the elemental mass now moment of inertia of elemental mass about z axis z axis or rotational axis or rotational axis z axis or rotational axis so z axis is like this from its center it will be like this so this is the rotational axis of the ring or z axis and this is a perpendicular axis to x and y so from it the distance from here the distance of this elemental mass is capital r is capital r so moment of inertia about this rotational axis is r square into dm and for the total ring we can integrate it between the limits 0 to 2 pi for the total ring this total ring from 0 to 2 pi so this will be equal to 0 to 2 pi integration r square dm now i'm putting the value of this dm so this dm is 0 to 2 pi and r square and for this dm m into t into r d theta r d theta now this will be r q and t into r q and inside d theta and 0 to 2 pi so this will be equal to 
एम इंटू टी इंटू आर क्यू और दिस विल बी इक्वल टू थीटा लिमिट जीरो टू टू पाई सो दिस इज इक्वल टू टू पाई एम इंटू टी इंटू आर क्यू नाउ एम पुटिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ एम स्मॉल एम नाउ पुटिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ स्मॉल एम सो पुटिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ स्मॉल एम इज कैपिटल एम अपॉन टू पाई आर इंटू टी सो पुटिंग द वैल्यू टू पाई कैपिटल एम अपॉन टू पाई आर इंटू टी and this is into t and this is r cube so by this 2 pi this 2 pi is cancel out and this r equal to r square so this will be equal to m r square so this i z z About the rotational axis or z axis, i z z is m r square. This is for a ring. Now, now by perpendicular axis theorem. Perpendicular axis theorem. I z z is equal to I x x plus I y y and I x x is equal to I y y for circular. So I Z Z or I X X is equal to I Y Y is equal to I Z Z by two or I X X is equal to I Y Y is equal to M R square by two. So this is. I X X and I Y Y for a circular ring about X X and Y Y axis and about rotational axis or Z axis it is M R square. Okay, thank you. Now the mass movement of inertia for a disc. So this is a disc, and it is the center of this disc, and this is the axis along x-axis, and this is the axis along y-axis, and the axis perpendicular to it, z-axis. Axis perpendicular to it, z axis, or it is the rotational axis. So this x axis and y axis. Now m is the total mass of this disc. M is the total mass, capital M, and small m is the mass per unit. Volume, so mass per unit volume, and if small t is the thickness of disc, small t is the thickness of the disc material. So mass per unit volume, this will be equal to capital M. Divide by volume. So volume will be equal to 
pi r square area into thickness. So this is the volume, pi r square area and T is the thickness. So this is the volume. So mass per unit volume is capital M upon pi r square T. Now, now, now in this disk, we consider a ring consider a ring at a radial distance a small x and this thickness is dx this thickness is dx and it is a radial distance x and the disk radius is capital R already we have taken this capital R so radius of this disk is capital R and we have taken this ring elemental ring at a radial distance x and thickness is dx so now the mass of elemental ring this will be equal to dm for the elemental ring dm and it is equal to the mass per unit volume into the volume of the ring so for ring 2 pi x is the distance length length 2 pi x is the length and dx is the width and T is the thickness. So this is the volume. 2 pi x into dx is the area and multiplied by T will give the volume and this is the mass per unit volume. So this will give you the mass of the elemental ring. Now mass moment of inertia of this mass elemental ring mass moment of inertia about z axis or rotational axis so from this rotational axis or z axis the distance is x for this ring so for this dm into x square this will give the mass moment of inertia of ring about this z axis or rotational axis and the limits will be equal to 0 to capital R because the ring will be expanded from center to outer periphery center to outer periphery so this is equal to 0 to capital R so now on putting the value of dm into it this will be equal to 0 to R and value of dm is m into 2 pi into x dx into t this is the value of dm and multiplied by x square so all the constants comes out and this will be 2 pi and this t and m this will come out and remaining inside is 0 to 2 r 0 to r and this is x cube into dx so now this will give 2 pi t into m into integration of it is x to the power 4 upon 4 and limit is 0 to capital R and this will be equal to 2 pi and t into m and this is r to the power 4 upon 4 now put the value of this small m put the value of this small m so the value of this small m is capital m upon pi r square t 
so on putting 2 pi into t and in place of small m capital m upon pi r square t into r to the power 4 upon 4 so this pi will cancel this pi and this 2 cancel this by 2 and r square will cancel this by r square so this will be equal to m into r square m into r square by 2. So this will be i z z. So this will be about a rotational axis for a disk or i z z. Now by perpendicular axis theorem as earlier by perpendicular axis theorem perpendicular axis theorem as earlier i z z is equal to i x x plus i y y and this is equal to i x x is equal to i y y for a disk circular disk so i z z is equal to m r square by 2 or this i x x is equal to i y y is equal to i z z by 2 from this relation this relation and this relation this is i z z by 2 or this will be equal to i z z is e i x x sorry i x x is equal to i y y equal to m r square by 4 so for a disk about x x and y y axis the mass moment of inertia is m r square by 4 but about a rotational axis or z axis it is m r square by 2 for a disk this disk so like this we can calculate the mass moment of inertia of a rod ring and disk okay next we will discuss in later